Are you guys tired of me going to Ollie's and picking up these comic book mystery packs? Well, I'm not. I'm having a blast. I love opening these things up, finding some gems in there, and sometimes you find some good books just for readers. Sometimes you find some good books that might even be potential CGC candidates. You never know sometimes. But I'm having a blast, and I also picked up some graphic novels as well. So stay tuned as we get ready to cut open these bags and find out if we've got anything good today. Welcome back, comic book fans. This is Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and for today's episode, yet again, we went back to Ollie's. Now, on my recent trip down to West Virginia to my hometown, I stopped in again, and I do this every trip just to see if they've got new packs or not, and if they looks like it's the same old stuff, I usually don't pick it up, but they look like they had some fresh packs in there this time, and got some interesting books on the top and the bottom of these bags, and I... Sometimes I'll look at those and I'll do a quick look up to see if there's some value on them. And that will intrigue me to go ahead and pick up a few. But uh, not only did I do that, I also picked up a couple of graphic novels as well. And I'll show you those as we go on here. But before we begin, before we get into these packs, what do I always ask you to do? Click on that like button, slap the subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my episodes. Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. All right, guys. Let me go find the scissors, and we'll get into these. All right, everyone. So let's just start with the first pack here. As you can see, we've got an X-Men 278 there on the cover. But more importantly, we had a collector's edition of X-Men number one with that great Jim Lee gatefold cover. And I took a quick look. As you can see, most of the spine there, it looks really good. It's always a good book to get signed by Jim Lee and, and Chris Claremont. And I decided... Hey, for $6, which is, if you went to a shop, you would probably pick up this book for $5 anyway, if it was in really good shape. So for $6, and that's what these packs are, $5.99, you get five comic books in there. So let's just see what, what we're going to find in addition to those two X-Men books. We'll just start with those right there. So starting off with, we've got... A pretty clean copy of X-Men number one. Definitely, I can tell from the light here in the room, it definitely will need a press. And what else did we get? We got the first, uh, the X-Men 278. Is that a Paul Smith cover? I think that is, actually. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give you values on this because I'm the only books I know that are in here are the ones on the front and the back. I didn't, I'm not looking up just those books. I'd kind of interested in see if there's any in here and if I come across one that I'm not aware of that is a really good value book you guys just let me know leave me a comment in the comment section let me know if, if I miss something and hey I don't want to miss a good book it might be a key that's actually worth something sometime oh wow check this out okay so we got one pretty good book here Venom number three from Lethal Protector the original Venom series but how can I not go to Ollie's and pick up some of these packs and not end up with just more copies of X-Force number five. I mean, is this the most printed copy uh, comic in the world? Because it seems like every one of these packs I pick up, I at least get another copy of this. I think before Halloween, in fact, this video, it might be after Halloween, I'm not sure, but I'm filming this before Halloween. I may have to I talked about taking a lot of these Ollie's books that are pretty much dollar bin, quarter bin fod fodder, and maybe giving these out for Halloween. So a lot of kids may end up with X-Force number five by the time I'm done here. So that was the first pack. I, I really just bought it for this. But that X that uh, Venom copy is actually number three. It's not too bad. I know that some of those Venom books had some value. I know number... Of course, number one, of course, but number two, and I think, is it number five, where you get some of the other symbiotes? Not really sure, but I know all those early ones are pretty good. All right, next pack up. It's got a Batman, Beware the Batman, number one. And it's got a Camelot 3000, number 12. The last issue in that 12-issue maxi-series with the Brian Bollard, Bolin, excuse me, Bolin, artwork right there. Mike Barr stories. I didn't know Mike Barr wrote that, but that always been a fan of a lot of Mike Barr stories. All right, let's cut into this. And I can tell you, I bought this. 
I bought this from both of those books. I'm not really collecting the Camelot series, but it's been interesting. I see a lot of their books, a lot of that 12 issues in a lot of these packs. And over time, I've picked up a good handful of those. And it might just be fun just to try to complete that maxi series. And so this is the first time I'd seen an issue number 12. But I really bought it for this here. It's Batman, the Where the Batman number one. It's kind of based on the, I guess, the one of the newer animated Batman shows. Wasn't much of a fan of that, but it's a number one issue, and I don't know if there's any hidden value in that. Here's a nice book. It's got, it's New Mutants number 30, back in the day when you had Claremont writing and Bill Sienkiewicz doing the artwork. I don't think this is a key, but it's still a pretty early appearance there. All right, then we've got from Marvel Comics, this is from some of their British comics. This is from, this is Warheads. This is issue number seven. And you've got Death's Head right there on the cover. It's another character that's part of that British line of characters that Marvel was putting out in the 90s. And then the last issue is issue number two of The Thing, the uh, Ben Grimm's solo series that featured him after the events of the original Secret Wars. He stayed on Battleworld, and this kind of goes, this, these stories right here kind of go into his adventures while he's still there on Battleworld. So, issue number two, I'm sure this is a Ron Wilson artwork. I think all of these were, or most of them were, yeah, Ron Wilson. Now, that's interesting. Let me take a quick look here. Yeah, it's Ron Wilson cover, but you've got, take it back. This is actually a really, you look on the inside here, and most of the series you had Ron Wilson artwork, and he's known for doing the thing because he did it in Marvel 2 and 1 as well. But on the inside of this book, it's John Byrne artwork. And man, I love me some John Byrne artwork right there. Nope. Uh, what am I talking about? I'm speaking out of my ass here, guys. I'm partially right. John Byrne's story, and he did the inks. That's why it looked like it was uh, John Byrne artwork. It's still Ron Wilson artwork, pencils, but John Byrne did the, did the inking. So tells you one thing good inker can really improve a penciler's work now don't take that to say that Ron Wilson isn't a talented artist in fact I've got some artwork up here in the wall some early Avengers work that's really spectacular but that inking is so predominantly John Byrne it looks like John Byrne artwork so he definitely overpowered the pencils on that good book I like it though all right next book next pack we've got Heard of that DC line of Star Trek The Next Generation books. I definitely didn't get it for that. I wasn't a fan of... I wasn't a fan of the comics. I never was a fan of the comics in Star Trek, even when the gold keys. Now, yes, I like some of those now that if you can get them high grade, but I'm only interested in the idea of getting them graded and reselling. But never was a fan of the books as much. And the other book in here was Steel Number Zero. So... I don't know why I bought that. That's this is a this is one that I think I just took a chance on. I don't think that steel number zero is anything of value, but you, know, you never know. Let's just start with the Star Trek book. This is Star Trek Next Generation number forty-five. My guess is that is a it's a book you could barely give away. Oh, this is nice. This is New Mutants number twenty-seven. That's another in that Bilson Kevich run. This is the second appearance of. Professor Xavier's son, Legion. You've got the Spectre from his own series. I think this is in the late 80s. Uh, 87, issue number 6. you got Warlock and the Infinity Watch number 3. Got the High Evolutionary there. I had this book when I was in my collection. I just don't remember the storyline in there. And of course here is steel number zero and it's got that nice metallic ink up there in the can't see it there because the lighting's not that good but you can see it. See if I move it there you can see some of the reflection in the metallic ink. All right well that was a nice little pack. Nothing too spectacular. I do personally I prefer the New, Mutant, New Mutants book but I don't think anything in here really has a lot of value although you never know on, honestly, 
older books like this, if you can get them graded at 9.8, even bad books can be of value. So there's always that. All right, next pack up. Oh, look, we have another Star Trek Next Generation. This is issue number 36. But I think I ended up buying it for this. You've got issue number one of the the invasion storyline. This is the Alien Alliance. And I want to say there's a, that's a key to something. But I'm just not sure what it is. I, there was a first appearance. I can't remember what it was. In fact, I just... I think I just heard this on another channel today when I was watching some other channels between taping the shows. And I don't know what it was. I thought it had something to do with Brainiac. But guys, let me know on this right here, on Invasion Book 1, The Alien Alliance, let me know what the significance on this is because right now I don't know what it is. I'll look it up after the show, but definitely leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what this is. I thought it had something to do with Brainiac. Maybe it was Luther. I, I'm not sure. But I know I bought it for that. I knew there was something in my mind that this was something about that book. It definitely wasn't for the Star Trek Next Generation book. But, oh, ooh, now this is nice. I don't know what the prices on these are graded, but I know that this is a very desirable Doctor Doom cover. This is West Coast Avengers number nine. Who did this? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's Al Milgram. That's what I thought. But I remember this cover. It was always a very spectacular cover. So I know that that's really desirable. Uh, this one actually has though, a couple of color-breaking spine ticks over there, although it's not, it's not terrible. It'd be interesting to see what that would grade out to be or what the grades are worth on that. This is from DC Comics. It's called... What is this? I can't even read that. What is that? What is it? Oh, it's it's Haven, Broken City. I don't know what that is. I, I've never seen that before. And then the last book that's in here is one of the 1980s books when they were doing the Challengers of the Unknown, kind of a, trying to bring them up to speed in the modern age a little bit. And I doubt that that has any value too. But again, just let me know if I've missed something here. All right, last pack. I didn't go nuts on this. I mean, and I did. I sat there for an hour going through every pack. I would look in the front, look in the back, and kind of sort them all out. And if I saw something interesting, I set it aside. And then I kind of weeded it down. And on a couple of these, I was just taking a chance. But on this one, we've got, from Dark Horse Comics, Will to Power, number 11. And a Secret Weapons, number 2, from Valiant on there. And I don't remember... Yeah, this Will of Power has a Mike McNola cover. McNola cover, excuse me. You know, the creator of Hellboy. So, maybe that was the reason I, I got this. And I'll, I've actually had this sitting here for a few weeks, so it's been a while since I even looked at this when, after I bought it, after one of my trips down to West Virginia. And I don't even know what was going through my head when I bought some of these. So, it's kind of unlikely that I would have picked this up. Something must have been going on in my head at that time. Anyway. Secret of Weapons, number two. And this is actually a really nice copy of Will to Power, number 11. I doubt that there's any money in that, but I'm just looking at this book, and it looks spectacular. That's a, They used some good cover stock on that at the time. And wow, look at this. A Star Jam, number six. You've got the kids from 90210, Criss Cross, there's Jason, there's Luke. That's pretty cool. I don't even know what that is. That <laughs> takes me back to the uh, early 90s, late 80s days of TV and and uh, watching watching 90210 all the time and then Melrose Place and things like that. All right, two last books here. This is Savage Dragon number seven, some Eric Larson goodness. I doubt that that's a key issue, mostly because even if you get the first Savage Dragon in this run, it really, even 9.8 is not that valuable of a book, even though that has a long, it's still running, guys. That book is almost as long running as, as Spawn. I mean, 
you would think there should be some value in Savage Dragon with this m many books that have been put out over the years, but it, it's amazing that it's lasted this long, yet it does not, it's not a lot of value in it. Very entertaining, though. I love, I love some of the Eric Larson stuff. And look here, the last book in the batch, maybe this is the best one of the whole bunch, and I'm looking at it, and it looks really nice. I mean, a nice, very nice copy of this. No spine ticks on the front, and then the back of it needs a little bit of cleaning. I can see that even in this dim light in the studio here. Jim Lee's Wildcats number one. Wow, that's a great way to end this video with all the books. Well, at least with the comic books. Uh... That's a really decent book right there. In fact, I wish I had had that. I might have sent that in for the Jim Lee signing at CGC that's going on. In fact, I've only think by this point, by this point, the deadline's already passed. But not a bad little batch of books this time. I mean, come on, there's nothing here that you're going to take a vacation on and get rich from or anything like that. Even if you wanted to CGC some of these, maybe the X Men number one, maybe this book there's possibly there's something else in here but guys just let me know if did i miss something have i missed something here is there something in here that's a hidden gem that i didn't realize when i was going through this i mean my opinion right here that was the best book of the bunch i couldn't have ended with a better book out of these books here today but that's not the end of the video i've actually got picked up a couple of other things and if you guys have ever been to ollie's you will also know that they have a lot of graphic novels whether the trade paperback or hardbound. And I sometimes I will take a look at them and I will pick up things like this right here. This is a Marvel Masterworks edition, hardcover edition of the All Winners comics from Marvel Comics. This is, let's see, which issue is this? Here, let me just read it first. I'll show it to you. And then let me read it to you. It's uh, All Star Comics. Numbers 15 through 19, 21, and volume 1 and number, and volume 2, number 1. And I paid a whole $10 for that. I mean, these books, I think when they came out at the time, yeah, $65 when it came out. This is a $65 book when it came out. And a lot of comic book shops will still have these hardbound books like this. They'll still sit on these at really high expense high prices you can go to comic cons where you find a lot of guys selling trade paperbacks and and hard paperbacks like this and just in bulk and that's what this is right here it's bulk i've seen this before at ollie's and other locations and might have already picked it up i can't remember but for 10 bucks i thought this is pretty cool even if, if i don't have it it's something i can open this up and read it and I did a quick look online. There really isn't a lot of value in this. I think a lot of people have realized you can pick these up at Ollie's and and try to resell them. But I just picked up one because mostly I'm just going to put it on the bookshelf and I'm going to open it up and read some of these great Golden Age stories. And then the last book that I picked up, and I mostly did this because I got to meet the writer at Baltimore Comic Con this year. He signed a couple books for me. And I thought, okay, I had kind of dropped most of DC's books, but especially since I actually enjoyed the movie that this was, I want to say, a little bit based on. Well, I guess. But it was still, it, it, it originates from this comic, from this story point. It's the Flashpoint, Flash, the Flash's Flashpoint stories, and this is Flashpoint Unwrapped. And for, what did I spend? A whole eight bucks on this hardbound edition. You got this beautiful Jim Lee pencils on there i thought i think it's jim lee right i'm sorry it's andy kubert what am i thinking um andy kubert that's still just as good why not let's get this let's read some of these books as i know i don't have any of the comics from this time period again i had dropped a lot of the dc books and i had not really kind of kept up with in the background books here and there but dc's not my jam it's definitely marvel and well, I may not be enjoying a lot of Marvel stuff these days either. Marvel's still my number one book overall. There's still a lot of books I get there where I don't get a lot of the DC books. Especially at this point where they're doing these reboots after reboot. And I got tired of it and I determined I'm tired of the rebooting, the everything. 
I'm stopping on DC. And for the most part, there was hardly any books I was getting on DC. So, yeah, nothing but not bad to have a little hardbound book to read through a little bit. It's an easy way to catch up on some things. So, anyway, that is it. That is it for this Holly's haul. I think this was a... This was better than the last Ollie's video. I will leave a link to that video at the end of the video. You can click on that and check out that last Ollie's haul. This one right here was actually is pretty decent. I, it wasn't too bad. There's definitely some keeper books in the comics, and definitely I like these hardbound books. If you guys get a chance to stop by Ollie's, definitely check out everything, the comics as well as all the hardbound books that they've got. Yes, they're in bulk, and they're pretty cheap, though. You can find some good things in there, so... Hope you, get, hope you guys get a chance to go. If you do, though, let me know what you get by leaving me a comment in the comment section. And let me know what you got. I would love to know what you guys are finding at your Ollie's. But that is it for today. Again, if you ever like anything in my videos and you want to reach out to me and want to make an offer on something, please do so by using email me at collectorauctions at yahoo.com or DM me on my Instagram account. You can also check out what I currently have for sale on my eBay store and on my short box page. Those links are again in the description on the video. But that's it guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. I will see you for the next show. And remember, every comic has a story.